everyone, how's it going? It's me, back again, and this guy is back, Jake. That's right, you guys might remember, last saw him it was last fall, we were getting Clone Wars Black Series figures at Walmart. What's up, Jake? Nothing much, I got four bunch of bunnies. Welcome back to the weekly vlog. <laughs> We've got uh, Bugs, Roadrunner, the cat. What's his name again? Sylvester. Sylvester. It's been a very long time. Uh, the pig guy. Forgot. Porky. Porky. Thank you. See, I know all these. Like, geez, Ross. <laughs> listen, I know all of these in like my DNA, but I just forgot them all on a conscious level. Sure. We've got uh, Tweety, and then I forgot the other one. So we'll find out. All right, Jake, well, it's good to see you again, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so even before that clip, and I finally did get a haircut before that clip, um, I actually was at that Target the day before. Not sure if I mentioned it, but I got the Shang-Chi uh, Marvel Legends figure, which is fantastic. Ordered this online at like four o'clock in the morning when everything went up on the 26th. Look at that likeness. I think that is one of Hasbro's best face scans. That looks exactly like Simu Liu. So I was very excited to pick that up and then also, I did manage to get the Battle at the Ancient Village set, which I was going to review and then I just kind of didn't, but I do still think I might because the dragon is just so awesome, the protector, and then also the minifigures are halfway decent despite not really having much leg printing and uh, rehashed faces and hair pieces. So I thought that this was the only Shang-Chi set that I really wanted to pick up. I'm not exactly interested in getting the other one, um, even though they did have it, but I actually ordered this on Amazon and then uh, like I think around 7 a.m. or so when they opened this set showed up as in stock at my target so I figured I'd run the risk and then place an online order with them to see if they'd have it prepared before Amazon shipped and sure enough that's exactly what happened so I was able to get this set and the figure on the 26th the day before the previous clip but then on my way out at the registers I noticed that they had some of the CMF Looney Tunes minifigures already which was definitely a huge surprise so in like the two or three minutes I was standing there I felt through some of them and I came away with like three because I really wasn't ready to commit to actually picking through all of the minifigures right then and there but I came away with Lola along with Daffy Duck and unfortunately a duplicate of Daffy Duck which I was not thrilled about but that's what happens when you just kind of rush it while standing there online. Regardless I did also go back the next day after texting Jake and we met up to pick through the rest that were there and believe it or not a lot of them were already gone by the time we got back there and I did manage to come away with Bugs Bunny. We got Sylvester here, we got Porky the Pig and also Tweety Bird and I still have to get the rest unfortunately like the ones that I wanted the most um, really was Taz actually because he used to be like one of my first Minecraft skins and that was kind of a big deal for me and obviously the Looney Tunes were iconic to my childhood as they are with everybody's but um, also like Marvin the Martian was a big one on my list and so I'm hoping to get Marvin the Martian, Taz and you know like the Coyote and the rest of them pretty soon here to complete this set because I really wasn't planning to go after these minifigures but then once they were right there in front of me I couldn't resist getting started and getting the ball rolling but these are just so awesome and so fantastic and one of the best is honestly I think this is the best CMF line that has come out since the Disney minifigures in my opinion since I'm like not the biggest Harry Potter fan for example um but yeah now I showed in my previous vlog that I got a Hunter and a Crosshair finally from the Bad Batch and now randomly from Amazon today this guy shows up which is this really god-awful uh elite clone trooper that I kind of wish I canceled somewhat because it's just so inaccurate and, and just really a half-assed figure by Hasbro's Park to just make a clone that somewhat resembles the new dark gray ones that we're going to be seeing as part of the new squad chasing after the Bad Batch and that's uh it, it's very not good it's very inaccurate and very problematic but now I've got it part of the collection so I probably won't get rid of it that's what you get for not canceling Amazon pre-orders. 12 seconds later. All right, well, I know the weekly vlog is definitely very late by the time of recording this clip as it is Monday when it usually would have gone up, but today is May 3rd, the eve of Star Wars Day and also the one year anniversary of when I first watched the Clone Wars series finale last year in 2020. And as such, I decided to finally tackle a project that I've been wanting to do ever since, but it just never really happened and time got away from me and now now, I have finally been working on it, the victory and death photo edits. So this is the main one here, which kind of has all the clone helmets facing Ahsoka as she's facing forward. 
And uh, that one, I mean, turned out really good. I think I must have worked on that one for like at least three and a half hours. And then also just today I designed this one, which is Ahsoka kind of looking at the lightsaber before dropping it. And then also the helmet one, which turned out really good too. And so both of those, really all of them were uh, challenging in their own ways because I had to figure out different ways of how I wanted to Photoshop the hood um, and how I wanted to get the uh, battle damaged helmet looking really frosted and looking like it had been there for a long time like it did in the show. And so all of that was really Really fun and I will be doing at least two more so here's a look at those no idea what I'm even looking at right now because I haven't designed it yet and then there's this one I'm not quite sure if I'll have time for this, but uh, I am staying up till 3 a.m. to watch the show probably tonight. And uh, I am hoping to do a bad batch edit because, of course, bad batch begins tonight at 3 a.m., like I just said for May the 4th for Star Wars Day. And and I mean, they've been working on this series for no doubt at least a year and a half, two years now. And it is the true definitive Clone Wars follow-up series as everybody knows by now, the series that I thought we were getting back in 2014 with Star Wars Rebels. Um, but now we are finally getting well over, you know, seven years later pretty much. And I am just so excited. Um, not thrilled to have to use these knockoff Bad Batch figures for any edits that I'll be doing, um, but hopefully I can get a better set of Bad Batch minifigures. That also includes Echo, because he's obviously not present, and uh, yeah. Here's that edit though, in case I did design it. Does it look good? I hope so. But it is a very busy Star Wars Day Eve this 2021 as I actually originally wanted to get my Rosario Dawson Mandalorian Season 2 Ahsoka to a point where she was ready for a photo. Unfortunately, like in time for Star Wars Day, that didn't really work out because I still have to paint pretty much the entirety of the arms and so much work has been going into this headpiece. Obviously I started this headpiece months and months and months ago, like four months ago or longer now, five months ago. And I'm almost to the point where it's fully painted now and it's been a long drawn out process just painting the head tails and the rest of them. I've already listened to two audiobooks just working on that piece. So uh, Thrawn uh, Treason, which was okay and, and definitely not my favorite, but it was somewhat decent. And then also Tarkin by uh, James Luceno, who of course is like my favorite Star Wars author because of course he wrote Darth Plagueis, my favorite Star Wars book ever. And uh, Tarkin was very good. I really enjoyed how it fleshed out the backstory the story itself of like what was going on in present day wasn't exactly eventful but you know Tarkin from 2014 was still um it holds up well in the timeline it still connects even though there's no mention of like Thrawn or uh, Galen Erso or Krennic because they had yet to be reintroduced or introduced into uh Star Wars at that point in time it's a really good book and I've been really enjoying it while working on Rosario Ahsoka 48 hours later all right everyone so Star Wars day already passed and uh so it was really good. I obviously watched The Bad Batch a little bit later than everybody else and uh, thankfully somehow managed to avoid spoilers pretty well, surprisingly. Before watching it, I saw some fake spoilers on Twitter by accident while doing some photo editing, the uh, Victory and Death edits that I was just talking about. Um, but now today is Revenge of the Fifth and I've since watched uh, the Bad Batch premiere, like I said, the full 70 minute long premiere. And it really is 70 minutes, like not even including credits. It's like a straight hour 10 of content. And it's, it was amazing. It was absolutely phenomenal. Um, I was completely blown away by the animation, of course. It is a direct continuation of Star Wars The Clone Wars, and so I guess uh, mild spoilers here, but I will try to uh, avoid them as much as possible, but just in case you want to go in totally clean, in case I slip at all in this clip or might allude to something a little too much, you've been warned for the Bad Batch premiere. So. Um, obviously the intro really took me by surprise and caught me off guard in a lot of ways. Um, not just, not just, you know, really by the characters involved, but the story and how that uh, kind of conflicts with some other things. Um, I absolutely loved the dynamics. D. Bradley Baker's performances were so, so good this time. And you'd think, um, you know, and it, it wasn't really prevalent with the first arc, um, you know, from the Clone Wars season seven with them, but you would think as D. Baker really does his best to differentiate between the characters, you would start to sort of notice it, but his performance is so good and the dynamics between the characters that he achieves are all so perfect um, that 
I was just so surprised. I just never even find myself thinking about D the whole time watching this 70 minute film essentially. And there are definitely like sort of three distinct storylines that sort of play out over the course of the premiere. But the whole first act, the opening sequence included narrated by Tom Kane was something else. But one thing I really wanted to hone in on, the entire premiere was great. It is a direct continuation of the Clone Wars. We are finally starting to see what the immediate aftermath of Revenge of the Sith was actually like. Um, but Omega was the huge, huge surprise standout. I was not expecting to like that character at all. I figured she was going to be kind of the show's connection to Rebels in the way that she would be very lighthearted, very annoying, taking away from the story, taking away from the characters, um, and derailing a lot of things. But no, she's an amazing, unique character with an original story that we've never seen before, not relying on tropes, not relying on blasting the Star Wars theme in your ear to get you to like her. She doesn't ignite a lightsaber to get you to like her. She's a really great character, a new original character, and really my first time liking an original Disney era Star Wars character this much, potentially since Rogue One. And um, so I am so surprised at how well she meshed with the rest of the Bad Batch. I can't wait to see where the story goes. There's so much here and so much to break down and so much in this particular spot in the timeline. I mean, obviously we can expect hopefully appearances from Commander Cody eventually, from Ahsoka, uh, Rex, who we already know is gonna show up and, and just um, the potential for what we could see during arguably the most turbulent time in the galaxy as far as, um, you know, the installment of a whole new empire, a whole new regime is concerned, there's really nothing like the first year after Revenge of the Sith. It's, so, it's just all so chaotic as the oppression of the empire fully takes root. So um, I, I, let me tell you, watching this entire piece, I'm like, this whole first premiere, I'm watching and I'm like, this is real. Star Wars The Clone Wars is continuing now with the same passion, the same love, and, and just the creativity as we watch all these people involved, like, you know, the Keith Kelloggs or like Joel Aaron, uh, you know, all these people involved and in, 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 that are working on this show, pushing the medium forward and continuing The Clone Wars. Now, a whole eight years after the original cancellation. There's something really magical about that to me. I, I just, I never thought the Clone Wars would continue. So to be getting it now through the eyes of the Bad Batch, it's an exciting time to be a Star Wars fan. And I can't wait for episode two. I've actually already seen episode two before it has come out, at least for me at the time of recording this. So it's it's going places for sure. And I would love to make the Bad Batch in Lego at some point in the future. So very early and very general thoughts on the Bad Batch premiere aside. I mean, those are very general. There's so much I'd love to say um, in addition to all of that. But we're going to move Captain Rex aside as well. Because uh, I had him set up for the first episode of uh, the Convor Call. Which is a... Stay. Which is a new show that uh, just started up over on my buddy Corey and Noah's. YouTube channel Kessel Run Transmissions. So the Combo Call streams uh, kicked off today and we did the first one and it went really well. So I'll drop a link to their channel down in the description below. I know Claire is also gonna be starting up her own streams over there pretty soon too. I also did get a bunch of knockoffs that I'm excited to talk about in just a second. However, first I got an order in from Firestar Toys, uh, which included an extra Falcon head in case I wind up needing one or using one, but I probably won't um, for my Falcon custom. And then I also also got uh, three new hair pieces, unfortunately two of which are a little disappointing. Uh, this hair piece wound up being a little bit um, more spiky than I was hoping it would be. And then uh, this mohawk, which I thought I might be able to potentially use on like a uh, Hawkeye custom. Uh, it just kind of looks like Elvis when you put it on, which kind of was a bit of a bummer. Um, so I can't really use that for anything. However, this hair piece here is the one that I fully intend to use for Peggy Carter, AKA Captain Britain in Marvel's What If come this fall. But yeah, an order from AliExpress did come in and I got a bunch of new, uh, well, knockoff minifigures from uh, WM minifigures. And um, these are all really great for the most part. Now I know for a fact WM did this one. I'm not quite sure 
who designed these. There are a bunch of different sellers that produce knockoff minifigures. However, this one has probably been my most highly anticipated knockoff for quite some time now and I was really happy to finally get this one in. As a matter of fact, I kind of forgot that I ordered it and uh, it does feature the new season seven Ahsoka headpiece, which is really exciting, not just because of how much more accurate that is than uh, Legos, for example, with their uh, god awful season seven Ahsoka. I mean, honestly, when you kind of compare it to this artificial color and even with the cheap plastic and the cheap printing, this Siege of Mandalore outfit and design is just kind of better than Legos to some extent. So I'm gonna combine some parts at the end of this clip to really kind of get the full potential out of uh, this knockoff Ahsoka headpiece with the head tails there, which is just so cool. And honestly, it really does solve a lot of the issue for everyone who didn't really wanna do everything that like I did, for example, last year and, and making like, your own fully sculpted Ahsoka headpiece and going through the uh, crazy process to pull that off. Now this one might be the most impressive of the bunch. This is the Hawkeye or of course Ronin knockoff figure and um, there is so much to unpack here and I mean just so many accessories that I wish I had at my disposal when I was making my custom Hawkeye from Avengers Endgame. I don't have the uh, hooded head on him right now, um, but you can see here with this one, you've got a full-blown custom hood with the mask actually as part of the whole overall piece which is already crazy. And I can tell you for a fact that this hood is certainly accurate with the engraved detail and all. Um, the head is just kind of whatever. But then you can see we've got this custom bow, which is really cool and uh, does not have holes drilled into the top, unfortunately. So I have some very fine drill bits that would be able to do that. But uh, I mean, this still looks great. And then also you have this vest, which is really great. I think it's a little bit big and a little bit bulkier and I still do kind of prefer the flatter version that I went with for the custom one. But I mean, that is so sick. And if I wasn't a customizer, I would be so happy to have this piece. And attached to the piece on the back is a custom quiver that connects to it via these small little pegs. And look at all of that detail. I mean, say what you will about knockoffs, I certainly don't fully agree with them. I don't agree with ripping off most people's designs. I think it sucks. But there's something to be said when these people do design their own stuff and create accessories like this. I mean, I would have killed for this quiver in like late 2019 when I was hand painting the detail onto this sanded brick warriors one. I mean, this is why I collect knockoffs. And you can see there's also this, which is crazy. And you can see, oh, it just flew across the room. Where'd that go? It's gone. Oh no. Well, I guess it, it used to be a thing. Well, I have absolutely no idea what just happened to the sword sheath there, but the sword sheath is another really detailed piece with the actual sword uh, that can slip into it. And then there's a peg on it, just like this quiver that attaches to this vest. And again, this is all like from a $2 knockoff figure. I mean, some of these knockoff figures are just literally a dream come true for customizers. Then there is the War Machine from Avengers Infinity War. I'm not really sure entirely how accurate this is. I'm pretty sure that for the most part, um, I know that the cannon certainly is accurate and that is really sick. And I wish I had that for when I made mine in 2018. Um, I don't know about the chess piece though. I would have to check. I don't think this, I think this is just Iron Patriot Mark II um, for the rest of the armor. However, However, one thing I did not know even existed, I did not know that any of the knockoff companies were doing this at all, but they're straight up producing Iron Man helmets with face masks that flip up without the chin. I did not even know this was a thing. I mean, I feel like this has been bucket list Lego Marvel pipe dream stuff since Lego Marvel began in 2012. I mean, these face masks seamlessly flip up with the chin still being part of the helmet and you can't even tell. I mean, I need more of these. Where have these been 
since 2012. Then we have Brothor from Avengers Endgame. Now, some of you guys might know that I sort of famously really do not like Brothor in Avengers Endgame, and I still don't. And that is actually, in fact, why I chose to make a uh, custom Infinity War Thor in his place for Avengers Endgame, regardless of the accuracy of it. Um, however, now with this knockoff figure, there is so much going on here that I want to talk about. First of all, back in 2019, when I made Captain America from Avengers Endgame, um, I had Andrew over at AB Figures cast this Mjolnir in brown so that I wouldn't have to paint the handle, so that I would not have to worry about paint tearing off the handle. And really no one was producing Mjolnirs with brown handles at the time at all. Now, fast forward a couple years later, and sure enough, we've got a knockoff Endgame Bro Thor with a really good looking Mjolnir that has the brown handle. I mean, this solves all Mjolnir problems in one shot for customizers. You get your hands on one of these, multiples of these, you never have to worry about painting a Mjolnir handle again. And so this is incredibly exciting. I bought, I think, at least three of these. Yeah. I bought like two Hawkeyes, so I guess it's okay that I lost the first sword sheath. Um, and then uh, I have like two extra Thors in case I need the Mjolnirs or the Stormbreaker or what have you. Um, but then within this same kit, you obviously also do have, again, Stormbreaker. Look at that. Absolutely amazing and certainly looking a little bit better than the one that I am probably still going to use for mine because even as good as this one looks, unfortunately, that handle is really not very uh, grippable by official Lego minifigure hands, but still looks amazing. And then you can see here we've got custom Thor vests. I mean, I needed this last year when I went and hand sculpted all of those pieces on myself. And um, this is the Infinity War version. But then they also include a Bro Thor version, which ha obviously is much thicker. And then you have the Bro Thor hairpiece. Now, this is where things kind of get a little bit, you know, not quite as great because you don't really have uh, the mouth exposed at all. And it's just all one piece that covers up the mouth. But it still looks great, even though it's in gold. I could paint this in beige in uh, that same color there. And this is like a detachable ponytail bit back here that is attached into a peg, which you can kind of see inside. I mean, bro, Thor is just crazy with all the potential going on here. I, I have not picked up a set of knockoff figures this useful in quite a while. So I don't know what I'm necessarily going to do with all of these parts, if I'm even going to use all of them to do anything. But I mean, man, I certainly want to upgrade my Ronin now. I certainly think that a quick makeshift bro Thor is much more doable now. Um, I mean, I have, if once I get my hands on more of these Ahsokas, there is more potential for display opportunities in my own personal collection and any of Lego's Siege of Mandalore Ahsokas that they release with this ridiculous shock T headpiece, I can now replace with this one. So this is all just very exciting to me and I really wanted to talk about it. Say what you will about knockoffs, they've even ripped off my Thanos in the past. These pieces are incredibly useful to me. Anyway, with all that said, I'm gonna go. It's been a long delayed vlog and so it's it's longer because there's obviously more footage um, since I had to put it off. However, now that we're past Star Wars Day and my first Bad Batch reaction is up and now by the time this is going up, uh, the second episode should be up as well. Um, I really loved episode two of The Bad Batch and um, I was thrilled by everything we got to see uh, with the team going to Salukamai and getting to see Cutlick Wayne and his family again for the first time since 2009 was so cool. I mean, I, I, I as a kid, first saw Cutlick Wayne and his family, and, and he's always been such an important part of Rex's journey, and to just casually go back and, and revisit with him um, immediately after Revenge of the Sith was really special, and it made for a really great episode, and um, Echo had more to do, and uh, the stakes started to feel a little bit more real for, you know, just what these characters are supposed to do now, and I cannot wait to see where the Bad Batch goes. It's just getting better, and, and the story, again, has so much potential, so... Thank you guys for bearing with me as always, and uh, I hope you're staying safe out there. So take care. May the uh, fourth be with you. Hopefully, you had a good one. And uh, all right.
Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.